Well, hello and good morning, everyone. It's great to worship together. Uh, even though we can't be together physically, I am so happy that we are able to worship still in spirit and in truth. And Jesus has told us that that is where he will be, where his followers worship him in spirit and in truth. And so that's what we're going to do this morning. Uh, I do have a few announcements to bring to our attention before we move on. Uh, things are still closed down. The office is still closed. Uh, obviously, we're not meeting in person for worship yet, uh, but we do have a benchmark uh, when uh, things are kind of near mid-June levels. That's where we want to uh, open up again with some restrictions in place, and uh, we're going to keep an eye on that uh, and see uh, what, when we can uh, get to that point and uh, reopen again safely. Until then, uh, make sure that you stay safe. Make sure that when you're going out in public, you're doing the, the things that you need to do to keep others safe. Uh, wear a mask. Uh, you can uh, social distance. Make sure that you are um, doing what you can uh, to stay safe and to keep others safe. We will have a church council meeting today at 2.30 that we're going to be meeting on Zoom. Uh, you should have received an invitation for that Zoom meeting uh, just about an hour ago. And if you do not have that Zoom information, make sure that you contact me so that I can uh, get that to you. Uh, so we'll meet at 2.30 today. We have a few things to discuss. Um, don't forget about our new Bible study. It is not too late to sign up. If you would like uh, to, to take part in this Bible study, it does start Tuesday, though. So you're running out of time. Uh, if you'd like to participate in our Epic of Eden Bible study, uh, which is going to meet on Zoom on Tuesday nights at 6.30 uh, for the next 13 weeks or so, uh, make sure that you let me know. We'll get you signed up. If you've already signed up, you know that you need to get your books today after the church service. So from noon to 2.30, uh, I'm going to be here at the church uh, ready to give you your books. Uh, make sure that you have your uh, money in hand to pay for the books. Uh, remember that that is just to cover the cost of the books. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all this afternoon. Uh, youth will meet this week. Uh, hopefully, this week, the weather will behave and we'll be able to meet outside the well. Uh, social distancing, of course. Uh, but if not, we'll, we'll meet on Zoom again. And uh, I want to put on your radars, if uh, I've already mentioned this before, but I want to remind you, next Sunday, we've got something very special coming. Uh, we're going to be worshiping outdoors, in person, together, at the well, uh, so that's going to be next Sunday, September 20th, at 6.30 p.m. We're going to meet on the east side of the building uh, at the well. Make sure that you bring a lawn chair, uh, something to keep yourself comfortable. Make sure that you bring a mask. You won't need to wear a mask uh, while you're seated in place, di socially distanced from others. But uh, getting there and back, uh, you know, mo moving back and forth from the cars and stuff, we want to be safe. So make sure you bring a mask with you. And we're just going to worship together. Uh, like we haven't been able to in a while, and I'm looking forward to it, and I hope that you're looking forward to it too. So I'll see you all next Sunday as we worship uh, outdoors together. Uh, don't forget about daily prayer Monday through Thursday on Facebook every day at 12:30, and uh, I think that's all the announcements that I have for now. So let's pray, and we'll begin our worship. Holy God, we are so thankful to be in your presence this morning. God, we pray that you would move in our lives and our hearts this morning. Help us to feel your presence here with us. Fill us up again, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would move through us. God, we pray that you would open up our minds to what you have to say to us. God, we pray that you would open up our hearts to your love for us and to our love for one another. And God, we pray that you would open our hands and fill them with service to you. God, we pray that this worship this morning would energize us to go out and be your disciples for the rest of the week. God, we pray that during this time you would fill us up with our connection to you and our connection to one another. God, restore us once again as we come to the feet of the cross. Restore us once again as we read your word and we sing about what you have done. Restore us again as we praise you for who you are and what you've done for us. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Well, today we have the social distancing chancel choir with us. Um, they are a little shorthanded because Judy is still recovering from her knee replacement surgery. And so we want to send Judy our uh, best wishes and our prayers this morning. Uh, God bless you, Judy. I hope you're uh, watching and I hope, I hope that you're recovering well. Uh, but the rest of the group is here and they are ready to praise. So let's praise with them as we sing together uh, hymn number 77, How Great Thou Art. Amen. Thank you, Social Distancing Chancel Choir, for leading us this morning. Uh, and now, friends, it's time for us once again to affirm who we are 
and what we believe in Jesus Christ. And so I invite you uh, to join me as uh, we affirm together our identity in Jesus Christ. I ask you, Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now an important question for you, friends. Would you rather stream a friendly church or an unfriendly church? All right, I heard you through the internets. You want a friendly church. Well, I want to be a part of a friendly church too. And I think uh, one of the best ways that we can do that in our current pandemic situation is uh, to continue our exercise that we've been doing. Write down the names of five people that you can check up on this week, Monday through Friday, one a day. You got it? You're writing them down? Just the first five people to come to mind. Maybe somebody you haven't talked to in a while. You getting them? You got them down? You got those five names down? All right, good. Uh, Make sure that you check in on those people uh, one a day, Monday through Friday. That's a great way for us to stay connected during this uh, time of physical isolation uh, so that uh, we can stay connected to to one another and we can uh, keep those relationships going and get some encouragement. Uh, I know we all need some encouragement right now. And uh, so thank you for doing that. Thank you for participating in that. Uh, It's a wonderful thing. Uh, Now let's continue and, and sing and worship as we sing together hymn number 186, Alleluia. Amen. Won't you please join me in prayer? Father God, we come to you this morning as your people in need of your help, in need of your life and breath. God, we pray to you as your people for the concerns of our church, for the concerns of ourselves, and for the concerns of our greater world. And so, God, we lift up to you, people of every nation all around the world. God, we pray for all of those who are suffering because of the global coronavirus pandemic. God, we pray for researchers. We pray for doctors as we're coming up with new uh, ways to fight the virus, new ways to prevent the virus. 
God, we pray that you would be with leaders and governments around the world, uh, especially dealing with this crisis. And God, we remember that this morning that we, your people, are a part of a global church. And we are brothers and sisters with our Christian friends around the world. And God, we pray that you would be with them and especially be with those who are facing persecution for your sake. God, we pray that you would give them the bravery and courage and perseverance that they need to go on. God, we pray for our own country. God, especially this, uh, this weekend being the anniversary of uh, the terrible attacks on September 11th, 2001. God, we pray that you would be with our country. God, we thank you for, for being with us during that time of crisis all those years ago. And pr- we pray, God, that you would be with us in the time of crisis that we are in now. God, we pray, Lord, that uh, there would be a healing in our land. God, we pray that more people would begin to think responsibly about how to take care of their neighbors so that we can see uh, the infection rates go down in our own country. God, we pray that uh, people would uh, be healed of this virus, that our schools would be protected, that our places of work would be protected. And God, we pray that... um, You'd be with our our doctors that are figuring out new treatments for those who who have contracted the virus. God, we pray for our elected leaders. We pray that you would give them wisdom and integrity. We pray for the safety of our armed forces. And God, we pray that the gospel would take root in our homeland. God, we pray that more and more people would know your love, your grace, your forgiveness. God, we pray for our United Methodist Church that we are a part of. God, we pray for all of the bishops, clergy, and laity. God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would lead us to be your kingdom people in the world. God, we pray for our own community. God, we thank you for this place we call home. We thank you for all of our wonderful friends and neighbors here. God, we pray that you would enable us as a church to be a shining light of love and of uh, friendship to the people in our community. God, help us to point them to Christ. God, help us to point them to your wonderful life. God, we pray that you would allow us to be that city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Help us to shine with the light of Jesus Christ in such a way that people have an encounter with Christ through us. God, we can't do this on our own. We need the empowerment of your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in doing this. God, we pray for our own concerns. God, we pray for our own anxieties. We lay them at your feet. God, be with those who are sick and in need of a healing. God, be with those who are injured in need of recovery. Be with those who uh, are struggling with their mental health. God, be with those who are facing difficult decisions. Give us your wisdom and your guidance. But most of all, God, we pray that you would give us your presence. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 4. We'll be reading verses 24 through 33, and then we'll be skipping ahead to verse 37. This is what the dream means, your majesty, and what the Most High has declared will happen to my Lord, the King. You will be driven from human society, and you will live in the fields with the wild animals. You will eat grass like a cow, and you will be drenched with the dew of heaven. 
Seven periods of time will pass while you live this way until you learn that the Most High rules over the kingdoms of the world and gives them to anyone he chooses. But the stump and roots of the tree were, that were left in the ground, this means that you will receive your kingdom back again when you have learned that heaven rules. King Nebuchadnezzar, please accept my advice. Stop sinning and do what is right. Break from your wicked past and be merciful to the poor. Perhaps then you will continue to prosper. But all of these things did happen to King Nebuchadnezzar. Twelve months later, he was taking a walk on the flat roof of the royal palace in Babylon. As he looked out across the city, he said, Look at this great city of Babylon. By my own power, I have built this beautiful city as my royal residence to display my majestic splendor. While these words were still in his mouth, a voice called down from heaven, O King Nebuchadnezzar, this message is for you. You are no longer ruler of this kingdom. You will be driven from human society. You will live in the fields with the wild animals, and you will eat grass like a cow. Seven periods of time will pass while you live this way, until you learn that the Most High rules over the kingdoms of the world and gives them to anyone he chooses. That same hour, the judgment was fulfilled, and Nebuchadnezzar was driven from human society. He ate grass like a cow, and he was drenched with the dew of heaven. He lived this way until his hair was as long as eagle's feathers, and his nails were like bird's claws. Now skipping ahead to the moral of the story. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and glorify and honor the king of heaven. All his acts are just and true, and he is able to humble the proud. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, we are continuing our series today on the book of Daniel. We've been looking about how Daniel and his friends were transported from their homes in Judah into the land of Babylon. And they were brought into this foreign land to serve in the king's court, the very same king that had conquered them. We have seen how Daniel and his friends maintained their faith in this hostile world, how they were able to use their cleverness and a little bit of guidance from God to find ways to be faithful in their new situation. We've seen Daniel and his friends take great risks in keeping true to God, and we have seen them use their skills of diplomacy to turn their enemies into their friends. Perhaps the greatest enemy that they had was the king of that great empire, Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar. But again, by being obedient to God and by loving the people who should have been their enemies, Daniel and his friends actually formed a relationship with King Nebuchadnezzar. They became friends with him. And as time went on, Daniel and his friends were given more and more power and more and more uh, responsibility within the kingdom of Babylon until they were pretty high in the government. And they became quite close with the king. Today we see King Nebuchadnezzar has once again had a dream. King Nebuchadnezzar was given this dream by God, and it was telling him about his own future. Now you might remember that the last time that this happened, Nebuchadnezzar uh, went to Daniel, who interpreted the dream for him. Well, now everyone at this point in the story is a little older and a little wiser. And so Nebuchadnezzar, he knows that Daniel can help him interpret his dream. And so Nebuchadnezzar goes to Daniel to help him understand the dream. Nebuchadnezzar had dreamed of a great tree, a tree that bore good fruit. And there were animals and birds that were fed by the fruit, and they lived in the shade of this tree. And then a messenger came down from heaven and commanded that the tree be chopped down to the stump. The tree was brought down, and then the stump was drenched in dew and lived among wild animals and had a mind like an animal. Daniel interprets the dream for Nebuchadnezzar as we see in our scripture reading today. Daniel tells the king that he is the great tree. And that the vast empire of Babylon is represented by the animals that find their home in the tree. Daniel warns Nebuchadnezzar that judgment is coming. And that he would be struck down just like the tree. And that he would have the mind of an animal until he learns that God, not Nebuchadnezzar, was all-powerful. 
Daniel begs the king to change his ways so that this does not happen. But of course, as we read, in a moment of pride, Nebuchadnezzar declares how great he is over all other things. And in his pride, he is brought low. God causes Nebuchadnezzar to lose his mind. And he lives as a wild animal in the fields. Uh, The Bible says for seven periods of time. We don't know exactly how long that was. Uh, The reason that we we describe it that way in the Bible is because uh, we don't know what the word in Aramaic means. But we just know that it was, you know, seven periods of time. It could have been seven weeks, seven months. But what we do know, it was long enough that Nebuchadnezzar's hair had grown really long and his nails had grown out. And so it was a little while. And so Nebuchadnezzar lived this way, lived as an animal out in the wilds, and after this length of time, God restores his sanity. And Nebuchadnezzar recognizes that he, uh, that God, not he, held ultimate power in the world. Nebuchadnezzar learned a very hard lesson to learn, especially for someone who was in the position that Nebuchadnezzar was in. Nebuchadnezzar was the most powerful person in the world at that time. His empire was unrivaled in his lifetime. Nebuchadnezzar was afraid of no one. If he wanted anything, all he had to do was speak, and it was there. He was more wealthy, more influential, more powerful than perhaps anyone alive today. But Nebuchadnezzar learned that no one, no matter how powerful they are, is greater than God. No matter how powerful you are, it's nothing in comparison to God because God holds the ultimate powerful and God brings the prideful to their knees. It reminds me of a poem that I heard once. It's a poem that you may have heard growing up, going to school. It's a poem by uh, the great Percy Shelley. And the title of this poem is Ozymandias. It's a short poem and I'd like to share it with you right now. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, two fast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert, near them on the sand. Half sunk, a shattered visage lies whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command. Tell us that the sculptor knew well those passions read, which yet survived stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed. And on the pedestal these words appear, My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, you mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains round the decay. Of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch away. That was a poem written about one of the great pharaohs of old. A pharaoh that had built a tremendous statue of himself in the middle of his great city. And on the base of the statue, it says, look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. And now the words are not on a proud statue, but a broken one. Time and erosion had reduced the statue to rubble, and the great city in which that statue had lived was gone. There was nothing but an endless sea of sand. The power of Ozymandias was brought down to nothing but dust. The same can be said of any great person who's lived through history. What is left today of Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon besides a few stories in the Bible? Does anyone today even speak his language? How often do we too thirst for power And we think that it will get us the things that we want. Or we think that it will make us happy. Or we think that it will make us feel important, feel special to the world. And we think that it will help us to gain the attention of others. But whatever our motivations, this kind of power is fleeting. We run after it, and even if we catch a little bit of it, in a moment it's gone. Just like Nebuchadnezzar, just like the great pharaohs of old, what is left of that kind of power? Nothing but dust. 
Nebuchadnezzar learned the hard way what real power looks like. The only power in our world that has any constancy or perseverance is God power. Nebuchadnezzar learned that God rules over all things, even the greatest of people. When Jesus came to us, he taught us how to experience this kind of power. He taught us about this real, lasting power. Jesus told us that real power doesn't work the way we expect it to work. Power isn't about having the ability to command others, but is instead about serving others. Jesus said this in the book of Matthew chapter 20. You know that the rulers in this world lord power over their people, and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be a servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must become a slave. For even the Son of Man, even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Paul gives us a further explanation of what this real, lasting power looks like in the book of Philippians. He says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others, but be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privilege He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of the highest honor and gave him the name above all other names. And at that name, the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Friends, true power, everlasting power, death-defeating power comes from God. And God shares that power with those who imitate Christ. It seems paradoxical to us who are familiar with human power. But God power comes to those who humble themselves as Christ humbled himself. God power comes to those who do not seek to be served, but to serve. God power is not fleeting. It will not end in ruin and in dust. God power is power even over death itself. God power is living. God power is eternal. And so the question for us is, to experience that power in our lives, how do we imitate Christ in our lives, in our world? What does it mean to live humbly? What does it mean to not be served, but to serve others? Right now, right here, in 2020, in Sand Springs, Oklahoma, what does that mean for us? How do we exercise God power in our situation? Let's learn the lesson that Nebuchadnezzar had to learn the hard way. That it's not about us. It's not about our own greatness. It's not about the monuments that we build to ourselves. None of that will last anyway. The question we need to ask is what is God asking us to do to serve and not be served? so that we may experience his power in our life. Let's pray. Father God, we recognize you as the source of all things. God, we recognize you as all-powerful, king over everything. And God, we pray that you would forgive us when we try to take your place, when we try to sit on that throne when we try to honor ourselves instead of trying to honor you. God, help us to imitate Christ by the power of your Holy Spirit. 
Help us to take on humility as Christ did. God, help us to set aside our desire to be served and help us to serve. Show us the best way to do that. God, help us not to fixate on worldly power, as so many do. But God, help us to pursue real power, your power, the power over life and death itself. Help us to pursue the kind of power that comes with serving others, of thinking of others as better than ourselves. Not looking after our own interests, but looking into the interests of others. Help us to pursue that power so that we may experience eternal life with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, friends, uh, we have a couple of ways we can respond to the word this morning. Uh, The first way is uh, something I've already mentioned, asking ourselves, how can we serve? How can we observe humility in our world today? That's not a question I can answer for you. That's a question you can only answer yourself. That's uh, something that uh, you'll have to discuss with God in your own life. And if God reveals something to you, I want you to pursue it. I want you to not hesitate. If you're waiting for permission, it is granted. Pursue what God is asking you to do to serve others. Another way that we can respond to the world today is through the giving of our offerings. Uh, For many of us, money and power go together. And so this is a way for us to surrender some of our own power to God in humility and experience his power in our life. I'm not worried about uh, the lights staying on. I'm not worried about uh, uh, the internet staying connected. God will provide for us. But it's important as an act of worship that we give to God. And so if you would like to participate in this act of worship, I encourage you to go to the website, uh, sandspringsumc.org, and click on the giving link at the top. Or you can just mail us a check at uh, 319 North Main Street, Sand Springs, Oklahoma, 74063. Uh, And this is a way that we can worship God with the things that we have. Now I'd like to pray and bless our offering. Father God, we thank you for the good things you've given us, and we're thankful for this opportunity to give back to you. We pray that this offering would go towards the building of your kingdom in our church, in our community, and around the world. Amen. Amen. Uh, Well, friends, uh, stay safe out there. Uh, Don't forget about our night of worship next week. I'm so looking forward to that. And uh, hopefully, pray for the weather that it'll be nice that week uh, so that we can do that in as nice nice an environment as possible. Uh, Don't forget, uh, if you're on church council, we have a meeting today. Uh, Don't forget to pick up your books if you're part of the Epic of Eden study. And uh, I think that's, uh, oh, yeah, and uh, if you need to contact us, Please feel free, give us a phone call, send us an email. You can get on the website, there's a, there's a form there. You can contact us. Don't hesitate to contact us if you need anything at all. Uh, now, uh, go in peace with this blessing. May the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and communion with the Holy Spirit go with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs>